The Bellator vs. Ryzen event on New Year's Eve was perhaps one of the most ambitious and epic crossovers of all time. MMA fighters from both promotions went head-to-head -head in five matches, with Habib Nurmagomedov watching from the sidelines. The Eagle was blown away by the level of talent and production at the event, and according to Bellator CEO Scott Coker, Habib was freaking out. Stay tuned for his reaction and more on the legendary crossover. First up, an unbelievable event. As fight fans, there's nothing more annoying than watching your favorite sport become inaccessible. The last time we saw an epic battle featuring a mixed martial artist was probably when Uncle Dana allowed the notorious Conor McGregor to take on boxing legend Floyd Mayweather. Heavyweight king Francis Ngannou is also trying to pull off a potential fight of the year by going up against Tyson Fury. But of course, there's only one obstacle in the way, Dana White. It sucks how fighters are prohibited by their contract and can't come together under a single banner to take each other on in epic crossover. Crossovers, but Bellator is different. CEO Scott Coker loves hosting crossover events, and the latest and perhaps the best one was on New Year's Eve. As we saw five promotion versus promotion matchups, it was Bellator versus Ryzen, and there was a very special guest in the stands. It was none other than undefeated former lightweight champion Habib the Eagle Nurmagomedov. And as the Russian fighter spent most of his early MMA career competing in his own country, he had absolutely no idea things like these actually happened. While watching Watching the legendary crossover, Coker claims Habib was blown away by the level of talent and production, and kept on saying it's unbelievable. This is unbelievable. I had no idea that something like this was happening in Japan. And while we were also stunned after hearing about the event, it wasn't too surprising, since Scott is known for giving the fans what they want. Habib, on the other hand, was straight up freaking out. Next, Japan is where it all started. Scott Coker was having such a good time watching Habib freak out, since this is all normal for him. He's been in the world of MMA for more than 20 years now, and we'll get to all that in a bit. But did you know Japan is where everything started? While Habib kept telling Coker how he was amazed by the level of competition, production, and pageantry, he casually told the Eagle how this is pretty much where it all started. Mixed martial arts as a sport started here, and even though it grew rapidly throughout the rest of the world, there was a time when Japan had the best MMA fighters in the world. There was no competition at all. The skills, competition, production, promotion, Japan had it all, and it was the home of mixed martial arts combat. Things only started changing when the UFC came around and bought it, just like they bought Scott's fighting promotion, Strike Force. The rosters were just brilliant at the time, and that's probably what prompted the UFC to buy it. You had the best fighters from Japan all under a single roof, beating the living daylights out of each other with hardcore fans lining up to watch the battles. You couldn't find it anywhere else, and if you think the UFC's lightweight or middleweight roster is the best in the world, world right now, you can't even imagine how things were back in the day at promotions like Pride, Strike Force, and K1. Believe it or not, Scott actually said it was ironic watching Habib lose his mind while it was another day at the office for him. Moving on, he's a veteran in the game. Coker has actually been in the business for almost 30 years now. He first started working at the K1 kickboxing promotion back in 1999. But even before all that, Scott founded Strike Force in 1985 and ended up selling it to the UFC in 2011 for a jaw-dropping $40 million. It might have been a huge payday for them, but it also meant the UFC had officially taken over MMA. And we don't mean that in a bad way, mainly because the UFC has turned the sport into a global phenomenon, attracting the top fighters from all over the world. Oh, and prior to taking over Strike Force, the UFC first laid its eyes on Nobuyuki Sakakibara's pride and took it off his hands in 2007. But he later founded Ryzen, and since both these gentlemen go way back, Back, they've been hosting these kinds of events and exchanging fighters ever since. The Ryzen Fighting Federation is sort of new, as it only started scheduling fights in 2015, but it's turned out to be a stunning promotion with some really great fighters. And even though there are a lot of dangerous MMA fighters in both promotions, the ultimate goal for every fighter these days is joining the UFC. It's a trade-off though, because fighters will miss out on the vintage MMA and have to stick to Venom boxers and fighting gear. But yeah, that's what we mean when when we say he's a veteran of the game. He's seen all the great fights in nearly every stage of MMA promotion. Now for Straight Out of Tekken. This is all probably normal to you if you've been a fan of MMA since the early 2000s. But if you've only started following the game in the past couple of years, we have something really interesting to tell you. Remember when Adesanya did that dance before his walk to the cage? Or that time when he walked to the octagon with Undertaker's theme on in the background? That's nothing compared to the production and pageantry that used to go down in Japan. 
Japan in the pageantry that shocked Habib at Bellator vs. Ryzen. Fighters made the walk to the octagon in style, looking like they were characters from the new Tekken. They had on some really cool masks and costumes, and even wielded swords to add to the look. Believe it or not, American mixed martial artist AJ McKee actually wore a $100,000 costume only for his entrance. It was vintage MMA, the stuff we got to see early on in the game when it was dominating Japan. Pro MMA fighter Yushi Sakura also wore this incredibly flashy costume as he made his way to the ring. It's pretty easy to understand why Habib Nurmagomedov was blown away by the event. It was such an unreal experience, and being a fighter himself, he was probably wondering where all this was when he was fighting. Speaking of which, we were imagining what costume Habib would have worn if he were still in those days. He doesn't really give off samurai vibes, but he could do a solid Agent 47 if he threw on a classic black tuxedo with a red tie. Following up, behind the scenes. Let's talk a bit more about what happened behind the scenes at such an ambitious cross crossover, mainly about AJ McKee's $100,000 costume. Manny Pacquiao was making his way to the building and had to pass through an area holding all the MMA fighters. As soon as he stepped off the elevator and walked in, he saw former UFC champion Quinton Jackson on his knees trying to help McKee fit into the samurai costume. That's not all. He looked to his left and saw Patricio Ferrere, one of the best featherweights in the world, warming up for a champion versus champion fight. It was a surreal scene. The level of talent and skill in that one room, the preparation and production behind the event, everything about it was amazing. We wish they made a documentary or something, so we got to see how these guys got together backstage and shifted into their stunning costumes to put on a show of the year. And if that wasn't enough, we had the legendary Habib Nurmagomedov sitting in the front row seat, waiting for it all to go down. We appreciate this crossover a lot, because it's all about the fans. It's not about business or profits or anything of that sort. The only reason these guys go through it is to to give us what we want. Even the McGregor versus Floyd fights, sure, there was a lot of money involved, but as fight fans, we got our dose of entertainment. That's all we want. Up next, an MMA tradition. And it's possible this might be the first time you're hearing about this crossover, but it's actually very huge back in Japan. The 2022 Bellator vs. Ryzen marks the 22nd consecutive year an MMA event has been hosted on the holiday. It's a tradition there, and we are glad it hasn't been polluted by control or greed by treating fighters like employees. Instead of having to beg and plead for promotions to satisfy their hunger for fighting, the Bellator and Ryzen CEOs themselves put them up to the task by scheduling events like these to make sure the tradition lives on. And we know we keep coming back to this, but it's important. This needs to happen more often, especially with UFC fighters, since that's where the best talent is these days. Just imagine how crazy an event like that would be. A Bellator, UFC, and Ryzen crossover featuring some of the best in the world. Also, we're not sure if you've heard about it or not, but Scott Coker also let Dylan Donnies go have some fun in the boxing ring even though he signed with the promotion, and we really think he doesn't deserve enough credit, because he's always looking out for us fans. Last but not least, a night to remember. It's going to go down in history, there's no doubt about it. The crossover had everything, from mind-blowing walkouts to some crazy knockouts. Almost 24,000 fight fans were packed in the arena to soak up the experience, and just Judging from the way things went, we are pretty sure they got their money's worth. Plus, it's good for the game, because it attracts a lot more eyes, and even though MMA has grown a lot in the past couple of years, there's a long way to go. That's it from our side, folks. What did you make of Habib's reaction at the Bellator vs. Ryzen event? And do you think the UFC should also participate in crossovers? Let us know in the comments below. Remember, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos in the future. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.